Welcome to Understanding Your Bible. We're glad that you've joined us today, and I hope that you'll take your Bible, if you have it there handy, and uh, turn along and follow with us in the Scriptures as we go through our Bible study. We've been talking about the revelation given to the Apostle Paul, and we've looked at some wonderful truths over the past few weeks concerning the revelation given to Paul. And so I hope that you'll follow along. If you don't have your Bible there handy, perhaps you could take a pencil and a paper and jot down the Scriptures and also... Uh, keep that pencil and paper handy because at the end of the broadcast we're going to be giving you some information about how you can contact us if you wish to do so. We'll give you our address, our telephone number, and also our website so that you can look our website up on the internet and see more about us and about our church and about our ministry. And you can also email us through that website and we would love to hear from you. Uh, we have a message on there each week that is the message of the week and uh, we have a question and answer section, uh, section, so we'd love to have you visit our website. So keep your pencil and paper handy and jot down that information at the end of the broadcast. Also, I would invite you to uh, uh, visit with us at Grace Bible Church. The times of the services will be given to you, and we would love to have you come and be with us. As I said a moment ago, we've been talking about Paul's revelation. And when we talk about Paul's revelation, we're simply talking about the truth that was given to the Apostle Paul by the Lord Jesus Christ that Paul wrote down in his epistles. The epistles that Paul wrote are Romans through Philemon. And, uh, of course, Romans is the first book after Acts. And in the uh, Pauline epistles, we find the revelation of the mystery. We find the revelation given to the Apostle Paul. And we find what is truth today for the church, the body of Christ. Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. During Christ's earthly ministry, He revealed things to the twelve and to others that were part of the ministry there as He went from place to place during the three years that He ministered upon earth. Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified and He was buried. He was resurrected. In the first part of Acts, we find that He again meets with the disciples and he talks to them concerning things about the kingdom. And he instructs them to preach and start at Jerusalem, then Judea and then Samaria, and then go to the uttermost parts of the earth. That ministry changes with the salvation of the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 9. Paul said in Romans chapter 11 that he was the apostle of the Gentiles. He said in Romans chapter 15 that he was the apostle to the Gentiles. So today we want to look at some things concerning Paul's revelation and in particular, I want to talk to you about what people call today the Great Commission. And that is the commission that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to the twelve. Actually, it was eleven because Judas had died and Matthias is chosen in Acts chapter 1 to replace Judas. But when he gives a commission, there are eleven of them there. I've got a chart here that I want you to look at with me, if you will. And on the chart, we've simply laid out the books of the Bible as they are laid out in your Bible of course, the Old Testament Scriptures, Genesis through Malachi. And in the first four books of the New Testament are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In those books, we find the gospel of the kingdom is being preached. That gospel is committed to the twelve. Those twelve are sent to Israel. And during that time, they are taught to observe the law of Moses. They're preaching baptism of repentance for remission of sins and so forth. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ dies there in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. His death is recorded, His burial, and His resurrection. After His resurrection, as I mentioned a moment ago, He appears again to the eleven at that time, and He tells them about the ministry that they're to carry out. In Acts 9, the Apostle Paul is saved. And the next 13 books in the Bible are Romans through Philemon. Now today what I want to do, I want to contrast the commission that was given to the twelve that relates to the gospel of the kingdom and the commission that Paul was operating under when he wrote those 13 books, Romans through Philemon, which is the doctrine for the church, the body of Christ. In Matthew chapter 28, uh, the last chapter in the book of Matthew, the Lord again is meeting with the eleven. It says in verse 16, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now that is one record of the commission that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to the eleven. Another record is found in Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16, verse 14, the Bible says, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven, and as they sat at meat, and upbraided them in their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, as I said a moment ago, these two passages are generally referred to as the Great Commission. And there is no doubt that this is a great, great commission. But it's a commission that was given to the eleven in reference to the gospel that was being preached by them, that they had been instructed to preach, and they carried it out as we find out in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 1 through about 7 or 8. The commission that they are operating under has some specific instructions, and those instructions, when we read Paul's epistles, we find Paul is not operating under those particular instructions. One reason is, is because Paul was not one of the eleven. He was not one of the twelve. Some people believe that Paul uh, took Judas's place and became the twelfth apostle. But we know that's not true because we find that Matthias uh, filled that position in Acts chapter 1. Uh, as a matter of fact, when Paul says over in Galatians chapter 1 that the gospel he received was not of man, neither was he taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ, he makes it clear that he did not receive from those eleven the gospel that he was preaching. So I want us to look at these commissions and I want us to compare the commission of the eleven or the twelve after Matthias joins them with that that Paul was operating under. The first thing I want you to notice is that the gospel that they were commissioned to preach in Matthew 28 and Mark 16 was the gospel of the kingdom. You see, in Matthew 28, when Jesus Christ says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, and in Mark 16, he says, uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There's no misunderstanding what that gospel is. The reason we know what that gospel is is because of, of passages like Matthew chapter 24. Just several days before the Lord Jesus Christ's death, uh, he was speaking to the disciples. And he said in Matthew 24:14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This gospel of the kingdom is the gospel that was being preached during the entire earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, when John came forth preaching, he came forth preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the gospel that was being preached, no doubt, is the gospel of the kingdom. It's called that in Matthew 24, and we find numerous references to this gospel throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What is that gospel? That gospel is the good news that the king has come. The Messiah is here. Now, Israel did not accept that. They rejected the Lord Jesus Christ at His first coming. And as a result of that rejection, He was crucified. He was put to death on Calvary. When the Apostle Paul is saved, Paul says that he uh, was given a revelation from Jesus Christ. Uh, over in Acts chapter 20, Paul makes it very clear that he was given uh, a particular ministry. And that ministry, he says, was to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Not the gospel of the kingdom, but the gospel of the grace of God. In Acts chapter 20, verse 24, he said, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. 
Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, Peter, James, and John, the other apostles, they were preaching the gospel of the kingdom. As a matter of fact, when you get over to Acts chapter 2, well, before we read there, why don't we go to Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, in verse 4, the Bible says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them, and the them there is the eleven, and Jesus Christ is meeting with them, he commanded them they should not part from, depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? There is no doubt what they had on their mind. They were preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. They said, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? He says, it's not, for, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father put in His own power, but you shall receive, the Holy, uh, you receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then He tells them that there will be witnesses both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So there is no doubt, if you believe the Bible means what it says, that these disciples were commissioned to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Paul, on the other hand, in Romans 1.16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul called the gospel that he preached the gospel of Christ and the gospel of the grace of God. Why is that? Because the revelation given to Paul was that the Lord Jesus Christ, who had come as Messiah to the nation Israel, had been rejected when he was put to death on the cross. He accomplished something there on that cross that had never been revealed to anybody until it was revealed to the Apostle Paul. So Paul says that his ministry was to testify the gospel, that is, the good news of the grace of God. And that's exactly what Paul did testify of. Throughout his epistles, he talks about the fact that Christ died for our sins. He said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself, not of works, lest any man should boast. So Paul's gospel was the gospel of grace. It was the good news of God's unmerited favor being extended to all men uh, on the basis of Christ's finished work on Calvary. On the other hand, the twelve, as they went forth preaching, they were preaching that the gospel of the, king, the, gospel of the kingdom, and that gospel was that Jesus Christ was the Messiah and that he had been proven to be the Messiah by his resurrection from the dead. As a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 2, in verse 30, Peter says, Therefore being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. In other words, the idea there that Peter is showing those people is that the Christ that they have crucified is the very one that God was going to raise up to sit on the throne of David. And when he preached that to the nation Israel, the men of Israel there in Acts chapter 2, they became convicted to the extent that they asked him uh, when they heard, the Bible says in Acts 2.37, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In other words, the idea there is we've crucified the Messiah. What must we do? He said, until the Lord returns, then you're to repent and be baptized for remission of sins, looking unto the time when He will come and your sins will be blotted out. Acts 3.19, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now that's the good news of the kingdom. The good news of grace is that Christ died for our sins and the death of Christ, the work that He did on the cross, is sufficient and has been extended to all men without distinction, no longer to the Jew first, no longer to uh, just a select group of people, but to all men. The Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing our trespasses. So the gospel of the Great Commission is the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel that Paul preached is the gospel of the grace of God. 
Not only that, as we go back to Matthew chapter 28 and we go back to Mark chapter 16, we see that a very important part of that commission is water baptism. In both commissions, Matthew 28 and Mark 16, uh, baptism is mentioned there. In Matthew 28, in verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in Mark chapter 16, he says, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now you see, f people that do not rightly divide the word of truth have a real problem with this. As I've mentioned on other broadcasts, there are those who take the water baptism there in Mark chapter uh, 17 very literally, and they teach baptismal regeneration today. They say that a man must be baptized in order to be saved. There are others who say, well, uh, we believe the commission's to us, but the baptism there is optional. Well, according to what the Bible says, it was not. He says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's the baptism that Peter preached in Acts 2.38, where we read just a moment ago, Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. That's the baptism that we find in Matthew chapter 3, when John came forth preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. That's the baptism that we find in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. That baptism is water baptism. It's for the remission of sins. And it was a specific part of the commission given to the nation Israel. But I want you to notice what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Now keep in mind, the baptism in Mark 16, the baptism in Matthew 28, was not an optional thing. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. That commandment, you see, uh, that commandment is just as much a part of the commission as preaching the gospel was, or teaching all nations, or going. You know, many times people just use the go there as the commission. Well, the going was not all of the commission. There were certain things that were associated with that commission. There was to go, they were to teach, they were to preach, they were to baptize, and all of those things were part of that commission that the Lord gave to the eleven before He ascends into heaven. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse 17, Paul makes a very important statement there. Now, I want you to understand before I read this, I understand that the Apostle Paul baptized some people. He says so in the book of 1 Corinthians where I'm fixing to read here. But I want you to notice that Paul could not have been operating under the same commission as the eleven were, and later the twelve, that was given to them in Matthew 28 and Mark 16. Why is that? Because in verse 17, he said, For Christ sent me not to baptize. Well, listen, how in the world could Peter have made that statement? Peter is standing there before the Lord, and the Lord speaks to him and says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, Peter would have been an absolute liar to stand up and say, Christ sent me not to baptize. Why? Because that was part of the commission given to Peter and to the other apostles, the other disciples, when they received this great commission from the Lord. Paul, on the other hand, said, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Now, Paul did preach a baptism. And that baptism was spirit baptism. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. In Ephesians chapter 4, he says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Now, obviously, there was more than one baptism as far as Israel was concerned. In Matthew chapter 3, we find three baptisms mentioned there. We find the baptism with water. We find the baptism with the Holy Ghost. And we find baptism with fire. All three of those baptisms are associated with the nation Israel and the coming kingdom program. The, when Paul said there's one baptism, he's talking about the fact that there's one baptism for the church today. And my friend, it is not water baptism. It is spirit baptism 
for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And Paul says there's just one, Ephesians chapter 4, and he said when you practice more than one, you're not keeping the unity of the spirit. So the fact is that the baptism of the Great Commission was as much a part of the Great Commission as the gospel was, and they were to practice water baptism. They were to baptize people, and that's exactly what you find Peter preaching in Acts chapter 2. As a matter of fact, over in Luke chapter 24, the Lord again is with the twelve, and you don't find this recorded or spoken of many times as a great commission, but here again is a commission. He says in Matthew, uh, Luke 24 verse 44, the Lord speaking, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. What did He say would be preached? Repentance and remission of sins. What did Peter preach? Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Peter preached exactly what the Lord told him to. It was part of the Great Commission, but the Apostle Paul never operated under that commission. He operated under the commission given to him, and that was the ministry given to him, recorded in Acts chapter 20, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now, one other thing I want you to notice before our time gets away today about this commission. In Matthew chapter 28, in verse 20, the Lord said as part of this commission that they were to teach them. He said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, back in Matthew chapter 23, we find a very interesting passage. Keep in mind that the Lord said, I want you to teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you. Now, you know, there are multitudes of people today that claim to be operating under this commission that do not do what the Lord said there. For in Matthew chapter 23, the Lord teaches His disciples to keep the law of Moses. And there are people today trying to operate under that commission and they're not teaching people to keep the law of Moses. They're teaching people they're not under the law of Moses, which is a correct teaching, but the truth is they're not operating under this great commission. The great commission says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Notice just one of those things in Matthew chapter 23. In Matthew 23, verse 2, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. Well, obviously, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat were teachers of the law. And that's exactly what they were taught to do. And he said, don't do after their works, but whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. The twelve were taught to keep the law of Moses. And the Lord said, whatsoever things I've taught you, you need to teach others also. Well, let's see if they did it. Look over in Acts chapter 15. In Acts chapter 15, in Acts 15, uh, verse 5, the Bible says, There rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now this occurred during a meeting that Paul had with the disciples there in Jerusalem. And it's interesting to note as far over, this was at least uh, 17 years after Paul's ministry began, and there are still those who are saying it's needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Notice over in Acts chapter 21. In Acts 21, verse 20, the Bible says, When they had heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Well, you know something? The Apostle Paul never taught anybody to observe the law. Paul himself at times during the book of Acts observed the law, but in his writings, the revelation given to him, he revealed unto us that we're not under the law. Uh, Romans chapter six, he said, or Romans chapter seven, verse six, he said, "We've been delivered from the law." 
So the Great Commission included direct instruction to teach the law of Moses, but the teachings of Paul never included that. As a matter of fact, they included doctrine contrary to that. Uh, in Colossians chapter 1, in verse 24, the Bible says concerning Paul, he said, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. I am made a minister according to He says, To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Listen, folks. Today, the church, the body of Christ, is not operating under the Great Commission. We're operating under a greater commission. It's called the Ministry of Reconciliation. And our ministry is to show people that they've been reconciled to God by the death of His Son, Jesus Christ. That's good news to you and me. And it's the news that we need to be spreading to people day by day as we preach the gospel of the grace of God. Thank God today that we've been reconciled to Him by the death of His Son. Grace Bible Church extends to you and your family a cordial invitation to join us for our Sunday services. Bible classes begin at 10 a.m. with morning service at 11 and informal evening Bible study at 6 p.m. For more information, phone 8460768. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Understanding Your Bible. For more information, write to the address on your screen or call 423-847-0768. Be sure to be with us again next week for another edition of Understanding Your Bible.